So I'm on my computer editing in one window and then in another window right next to it, I'm playing back certain clips untangled over and over and then only a few minutes into the movie, something catches my eye. So I go back and I pause it and start playing it through frame by frame. And all of a sudden I'm just like, no, no, like holy. So we're gonna start at the end and work our way back up to my mind-blowing discovery at the beginning of the movie. So here's what you missed by skipping the credits. Our first two Easter eggs are hiding in Flynn's map of all the places that he and Rapunzel go in the movie. So we're gonna start our countdown with number 11, a sea monster right here northeast of the castle. And if you subscribe to the theory that Elsa and Anna's parents were on their way to Rapunzel and Eugene's wedding when their ship went down, Maybe, just maybe, this sea monster had something to do with it. And I know that is definitely a stretch, but perhaps someone should just warn Elsa before she takes off running into the ocean again. So next up, the mysterious got shot here. Though he definitely had close calls, like we never see Flynn get shot. Nor does he ever use a bow and arrow, but we do see him climbing up Rapunzel's tower using two arrows, which perhaps they actually did get shot, which would explain then why he needed so badly to hide from Max instead of continuing to run, and where he got the bow and arrow, not the bow and arrow, but like the arrows that he used to climb up Rapunzel's tower. All right, so another Easter egg hiding in the credits is the fortune-telling monkey Vigor the Visionary. Poor Vigor, he got cut from the actual movie. Behold, Vigor the Visionary! But he still snuck into the credits here. And what's really cool is we actually get a sneak peek into Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, which is the series. Vigor is a key character in at least two of the episodes so far. <laughs> Next is something that I'm sure that someone somewhere has to have mentioned, but I can't find it anywhere. You may have heard that at least at the time, Tangled held the record for the biggest crowd seen in any Disney movie, over 3,000 people. And maybe it still holds the record. I don't know. Somebody can tell me in the comments if Tangled does still hold the record. I watched every crowd scene multiple times, and a few times I spotted either light brown or red hair, but Almost everybody just has dark brown hair, and I could find literally nobody else with blonde hair. No wonder that she starts putting things together when she sees the mural of herself. So the first time ever in her life that she sees another person with blonde hair is when she comes face to face with a mural of this mysterious lost princess who looks just like her and shares the exact same birthday. Not to mention she looks nearly identical to the mom if you just change the hair color. I can see already I may get a lot of grief for this, but something you may have missed is Pascal does literally nothing useful the entire movie. You could cut him out of it and the plot is the exact same. And you might say, but wait, he trips Mother Gothel and then she falls to her death because he trips her wrong. No, no, like she's already dying when she falls out the window because she's too old to survive without the flowers magic. And so she's dust before she ever even hits the ground. And I get that you might be able to argue that he keeps Rapunzel company, but most of that happens before the movie starts. I am really biased and probably being unfair to poor Pascal because basically I've had several stalker men tell me that they felt like they were Pascal and I was Rapunzel and anyway, I have to say Pascal in the series is great and he totally redeems himself and even saves the day. So it's not like he's totally useless in the series. So next up, we're kind of touching on a fan theory that I used to really like, but now I just don't agree with it. The idea that Mother Gothel is actually the evil queen. <laughs> What? Let me know in the comments if you want a video on why they're definitely not the same person. However, those of you who do subscribe to this theory are 
gonna like this one. The pattern on Mother Gothel's dress. It just looks so much like the Evil Queen's little heart box, heart stabby box thing. If I hadn't done more research, this probably would have had me convinced that they're the same person. But speaking of dispelled myths, one of the most common Easter eggs, at least that I've seen, is that Sleeping Beauty's spinning wheel is inside Rapunzel's tower. And <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but it's, it's not. Which makes me kind of sad because I, re I really, really, really liked this theory. I love like little hidden princess things. And there are hidden princess things. The apple and Cinderella's slipper. Yes, it is a spinning wheel, but it's clearly not the same spinning wheel that Maleficent used on Aurora. So this little wooden thing on Sleeping Beauty's spinning wheel is completely different than the one in Rapunzel's tower. All the parts are shaped completely different and the main pole thing. It's slanted in Sleeping Beauty, but it's perpendicular to this wood thing in Tangled. So there you go. My fine knowledge of spinning wheels. So and if you're thinking perhaps it just changed somehow and the transition to 3D animation, no. Um, so Sleeping Beauty's spinning wheel is in both of the princess scenes and Ralph breaks the internet. And again, it, it doesn't match Rapunzel's. It's true to the one in Sleeping Beauty. And for some reason, <laughs> this is still not enough evidence for you. We actually see in Tangled the series that the spinning wheel is stored inside the spire vault. It's pronounced spire. It comes from spira. <laughs> it's Latin. And if you're looking for some bonus Easter eggs, you'll also see a ton of Disney artifacts. In that episode, Mickey's sorcerer hat, the sword and the stone, the evil queen's heart box that we were talking about earlier, the black cauldron, magic broom. I think they're a broom, but honestly, to me, they kind of look more like magic mops, but that's besides the point. As we get closer to the end of the countdown, the next Easter eggs are going to have more and more tie-ins with the series. In order to talk about some of them, I have to reveal some minor spoilers, but it's, it's nothing major. Obviously, we can't have anything too major because the series is still going on, so we don't know how it ends. So that brings us to number four. Okay, so there is a line in Mother Knows Best where Gothel says, the mother Go ahead, get trampled by a rhino. The song was actually getting kind of long, so they wound up cutting this verse from the movie, but you can still hear it on the soundtrack. Where would Gothel ever see a rhino? Okay, so rhinoceros, rhinoceroses, rhinoceroses? We'll just go with rhinos. <laughs> live in Africa and South Asia. And like the original Rapunzel tale is set in Germany. I think it's pretty widely accepted that Corona is somewhere in Germany, even though the kingdom design was based off of Mont St. Michael. And please, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I don't know how to pronounce it. And I was going to look it up before I was talking about it but then I forgot and now I'm recording so I'm not going to stop everything to look it up. So you guys can all harass me in the comments if I totally butchered that, which I probably did. But this is, it's in France, it's in Normandy. That's what the like, Corona Kingdom with the island castle is based off of. Which by the way, that is actual footage of the real castle in my live action Tangled short. But anyway, it's such a weird animal like for Gothel to choose when she probably would never even have heard of one, much less seen one. Okay, but recently we got an unexpected rhino tie-in to Tangled the series that gives some honestly like, pretty compelling evidence about where Gothel learned the healing incantation. To talk about this, I'm going to have to reveal a few series spoilers so if you're not caught up and you don't want to hear, I'll put like a little timestamp somewhere around here that you can skip to but you need to catch up so that you can come join us as we spill the tea on Rapunzel. Okay so six months into their journey to follow the Black Rocks to the Dark Kingdom. Rapunzel around the beginning of the they're approaching the Great Tree which is basically more like, I don't know how to describe it, like an indoor mountain because it's that big and it's journey through the Great Tree. Well, the path to the Dark Kingdom is guarded by a group called the Brotherhood and they basically sworn to keep people away because that's where the moonstone is, and anyway, so Hector is the guardian of the tree area, and he comes chasing after them. Man, you guessed it. He rides a rhinoceros. 
Actually, I don't know if you guessed it. <laughs> I don't know how obvious that was that he was going to be riding a rhino given the setup there. <laughs> Anyway, so Rapunzel and friends, they get past Hector and his rhino and they venture into the tree and they find this room with mysterious runes all over the walls, including the same message as what's written on the scroll with the little sun drop and the moonstone. So who translated it? I think there's a pretty good possibility that that purple handwriting there belongs to Mother Gothel. So I realized that my memory card ran out of space. So this is take two of the entire rest of the video. Everyone always mentions the mobile and how it's hiding Pascal, Max, Shorty, and the little snuggly duckling. And some people actually mention the little bird too. And they say that it's because like a bird flies out when she's coming out of her tower for the first time. Well, there's actually more foreshadowing in the mobile than we thought with that bird because birds become much more significant to Rapunzel later. This is like the most minor spoiler ever, but in case you don't wanna know, I'll put the timestamp up here. She starts to identify with birds like so much. She wears like a little bird clip in her hair. She even turns into a bird in one episode and almost gets stuck permanently as a bird. Number two, we are almost the last item on our list. The one that has me like completely mind blown. Um, but don't skip ahead because this is a really good one. The first time I watched the very first episode of Tangled series, I was like, um, why does Cassandra look like Mother Gothel? And uh, there's other people out there who've mentioned this because it's, it's kind of hard to miss how much they look alike. <laughs> but there's some really interesting Easter eggs around this that nobody seems to be talking about. Number two is the Gothel-Cassandra connection. I definitely don't think Cassandra's evil. I think she's more than like proven herself to be a good friend to Rapunzel. But there is enough evidence to convince me that they are connected somehow, like in some way, even like whether or not she even knows it. Nobody else in Corona at all looks anything like Cassandra or Gothel, like the pale skin and the gray eyes and the black with gray streaks hair. Like the only person who's even close with the hair is Freeborg <laughs> and their faces. Yeah, nobody's face looks like Freeborg's. <laughs> Oh, Freeborg. Very first episode, Cassandra helps Rapunzel sneak out of the palace for one night. And so like, this is the first episode. So I don't even feel bad about spoiling this for you because if you haven't even watched the first one, maybe this will like get you to watch it. So like episode one, uh, all Rapunzel wants to do is like get out and just see some stuff and not be locked up. But Cassandra takes her right to the Black Rocks. Uh, like, they don't happen upon them. It's just while Cassandra is supposed to be protecting Rapunzel, Cassandra leads them to the one place that is probably super dangerous. Like these ominous black rocks that just start growing out of the ground magically where the sun drop flower used to grow. Like, Okay, first, how does Cassandra even know about this place? And why would she risk her lifelong dream of being captain of the guards by taking Rapunzel there? Like, like I don't think that she knew what would happen if Rapunzel touched the little rocks, but it just seems like just a huge risk to take for no apparent reason. So what do we know about Cassandra? We know that she was adopted by the captain of the guard. I don't remember my real parents. He started training her as a guard from the time that she was age six. I've been training with the guard since I was six. She's four years older than Rapunzel. I'm four years older than her! And we really don't know much else about Cass's early years. Eugene asks her about like her life before she was adopted and she said she doesn't know and kind of like diverts away from the question you know what i don't really want to discuss this with you eugene so let's just say like that cassandra really is just truly like out of character too <laughs> exercising poor judgment and just decide she's gonna take her punzel there to these rocks just because she thinks they're like cool or whatever there actually is like 
a big problem from Tangled the movie that would be solved if Cassandra were actually Mother Gothel's daughter. How did Gothel feed baby Rapunzel? Baby formula wasn't invented until like decades after Tangled took place. So it's like possible that Gothel could have fed Rapunzel some sort of animal milk, but like even back then they knew that it wasn't good for babies. And Gothel was like way too protective of her flower to risk feeding her anything weird. There's like no way she could use a wet nurse or even like bottle up milk from someone in town because it's just, it would have raised so many red flags because like the whole kingdom is up in arms because like the baby princess was just stolen and they're all in an uproar about it. Like, I'm rightfully so, no one wants babies to be stolen, baby princesses. Anyway, what's interesting is Gothel actually tells us how she fed Rapunzel. In the verse of Mother Knows Best that only made it into the soundtrack when we talked about earlier with like the rhinos, Gothel says, I only begged and changed and nursed you. Like she flat out says that she nursed Rapunzel and granted, <laughs> Gothel isn't exactly known for being the most truthful. Like even throughout the course of the song, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that she's at least telling the truth about bathing Rapunzel. If Cassandra were actually Gothel's child, she could have easily still been like breastfeeding Cassandra when she was four, which would have been when she stole Rapunzel. It's 100% biologically possible and answers the question of how Gothel would feed an infant in isolation. Okay, spoiler alert, skip to timestamp somewhere around here if you're not caught up and don't wanna know. Plus, okay, here's some like, really crazy evidence of a connection. Okay, so like Adira uses her whole body to knock Rapunzel into the little water pool when she's using the Moonstone incantation and nothing happens to her. Like Adira's totally fine. Cass touches Rapunzel through a glove <laughs> while well, she's using the incantation and Cass's like, whole arm withers up. Like weird and why? That's, that doesn't make any sense. We have reached item number one, which is like one of the biggest, clearest Easter eggs I've ever seen. And I'm like, why is nobody talking about this? I'm like, surely somebody else has seen this. I just feel like, I just can't find anyone talking about it. And I feel like everyone should be talking about this. So I'm on my computer editing in one window and then in another window right next to it, I'm playing back certain clips of Tangled over and over and then only a few minutes into the movie, something catches my eye. So I go back and I pause it and start playing it through frame by frame. And all of a sudden I'm just like, no, no, like holy it's like mind blown. This is the biggest tie-in I've ever seen, like other than like, I don't know. I don't know. It's like you would have had to have planned this. Okay, so, ah, I'm so excited. I want to get to like share this with people. I feel like no one's talking about it. Did you catch it? So Rapunzel only has three books. Why are we not talking about what the books are? Okay, so one, one's a cookbook, probably just so she and Mother Gothel can eat. And then the only other two books she has and reads like every day are a botany book and a geology book. Flowers and rocks. Like, Easter egg numero uno, Rapunzel's books, like, if that is not evidence that Gothel knew about the rocks, like, I don't know what is. Like, it's like, that is right there in Rapunzel's arms, the very first song in the movie. That's the whole series, like, right there. The whole point of it, she's holding them. And I'm like, what? It is the most blatant foreshadowing I've ever seen. And instead of talking about this craziness, we're all over here talking about, oh, how? Oh, this fun little Easter egg, you know, like 
Aurora's uh, spinning wheels and Rapunzel's tower and it's not even. And instead we have like the biggest freaking Easter egg of all time. The biggest, clearest foreshadow I've ever seen and I'm just like mind blown. Like seven years, almost a decade before the series even exists. It's right here. And this brings up so many questions like, did Gothel have anything to do with the Brotherhood? Were the Black Rocks starting to take over Corona while like even while Rapunzel was still in the tower? Or was Gothel trying to find the Moonstone? Maybe that's where she was trying, like, going when she would disappear and leave Rapunzel up in her tower for days at a time. And did Gothel like, eventually want Rapunzel's help trying to figure out the mystery? Because she's like a smart cookie. She figured out how to like chart stars and stuff all on her own without even like an astronomy book. Uh, she has was one on a flower, one on rocks, and a cookbook. Like, after all, like, like, Gothel left these books out, like, right in the open for Rapunzel to read and lets her read them every day. It's not like they were hidden up in Gothel's room, like, stuffed under her mattress. She's just out there and she's like, yeah, read these books. Foreshadow, foreshadow, foreshadow. Read these books. Read the book on a flower and rocks. I can't even, I can't even with this. Disney, Disney, this is, it's too much. I'm convinced, like, Gothel knew that otherwise these books aren't gonna be in from Rapunzel's tower for her to read. Does Gothel know things about the Moonstone that we still don't know? I don't know. And I hope we get some answers to all of these questions as they're still finishing up the series because I've got a lot of questions. I've got a lot of questions and I want them answered. And if we don't get them answered, I'm just gonna have to like keep making up theories. Anyway, that is all 11 of my tangled Easter eggs list. So if you learned anything new, please give the video a thumbs up. Oh, and also tell me in the comments, which of these you've spotted before, which ones are new for you, and especially tell me if these like made you think of any new theories in your own because like it's a lot to digest here <laughs> and I want to hear what you guys think because this is this, there's a lot I've got a couple more of these videos on the way one is involving Frozen 2 which is exciting and another it involves some Disney villains honestly like this thing that I've noticed is so crazy that I'm, I'm convinced that when people see the title they're going to think that I'm completely crazy that I've lost my mind until they watch it because it's like like, I would have thought that. I would have been like, this is clickbait, but it's not. It's, it's just so wild. And the evidence ha honestly has me even more shook than like the Rapunzel Rocks and Flowers book. By a lot. Because both of the villains like are from movies that are older than me. And nobody I've like, ever seen has, has mentioned this. So that, I'm excited about that one. So if you wanna see more videos on Disney fairy tales and making your life more magical, subscribe and ring the little bell. Anyways, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Once upon a time, a single drop of sunlight fell from the heavens to create a magic golden flower. But hey, you know the story. Creepy old woman locks long hair princess up in a tower. And then each year on her birthday, glowing lanterns filled the sky. Princess Rapunzel dreamed of setting off on an adventure to see the lanterns.